He's voicing in the night in which he's betrayed, the last night he has on the earth in his earthly body, and he's asking God, his father, right, for what he wants. Now he says there, if you don't mind jumping in verse 20, forgive me for jumping into the middle, but he says in verse 20, I do not ask for these only. So he's talking about these in this, in this context. He's talking about the disciples, okay? They're walking with him. They're actually walking right now, and they're on their way to uh, the garden. And he says, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Think about that. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved me even as you loved, excuse me, and loved them even as you loved me. Father, I desire uh, that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you and these know that you have sent me. I made myself known to them Excuse me, I made known to them your name and will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Now, obviously, there's a lot to talk about there, and there's, there would be a whole probably sermon series in itself there. But the point is, in, in, as a gist or as a, a culmination, Jesus is literally praying, and he's saying, I want... All the people, these, these people that are with me, and everyone who will ever believe the gospel through their word to be unified, to be one. And then he says, and I want them, their unity, to be like the unity that I have with you. And then he says, I want that same unity that they have and we have to be combined that they would be one in me as I am in you. So again, like the... Theory is understandable, right? Okay, a lot of unity, right? How that would work is, is pretty, uh, probably worthwhile for some study. But the point is this. I want us to be one, and I want to be one with them. Think about that. That's the heart of Jesus. And then he says, I want them to be with me, where I am with you. See, you are designed to be with God. I mean, all the way back to the beginning, that's what human beings did, right? They cruised around naked in a garden with God. And there was no shame, no condemnation, just, you know, hanging out and trimming trees, basically. They tended the garden. And they just ate from the fruit of the garden as they walked around there. And the, the, the nudity, to the pictures, there's just no separation, no shame. Just absolutely viewed by God with nothing to hide. And viewing God and walking with him. We're not trying to be crass or something like that. But that's, that was God's original intention with humanity. And he will bring that original intention, in the, uh, intention back around and fulfill that. But in, in this time, it'll be in a complete and in a spiritual and physical way with our new bodies. So we'll have this amazing conglomerate. I don't, I don't know what it'll be like. So it should not be abnormal for us to feel lonely in this world. And I'm not saying we should feel lonely, I'm saying we shouldn't be surprised when we feel lonely because that's what we were designed for. Now, what stops that is sin every time. Sometimes it's other people's sin. We're not trying to, to, to say that church is always right and we've been wrong as individuals. But if we're going to be honest, oftentimes it's our fault. So back to our example we get offended or something doesn't go our way or whatever it might be. And then we retract and we say, I'm not going to make this right. And we're so crazy that once we retract, we begin to have all these weird thoughts in our head. And then we have all of Facebook to validate those weird thoughts for us. And, 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 it, and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper when we're like all these people. And oftentimes they're not believers they're just people from work or whoever they are. And you just, you, you, we, we just type something. This happened to me. And everybody goes, yeah, that person sucks. To hell with them. And we're kind of like, yeah, yeah. 
That's a good point. That's why I put it out there, because I knew I was right. And we, we, we developed the support for an offense. Now, you might be right. That person might have offended you and done something completely wrong. But you've jumped. I've jumped from God's course to the course of this world as soon as I've tried, looked for justification for me neglecting and separating myself from God's people and from his course. I say that with all the love and the respect in the world. My, my heart is not to condemn or destroy anybody. My, ho my hope is to help you with your joy. That if you're in a position now where you're retracting from fellowship, retracting from God's people, and, and, you're, and, and becoming more angry and bitter, that's the thing. When we retract from God and from his people, we don't love them more. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's what Jesus told us. In other words, what you value, what you invest in, that's where your heart is. So when we retract from God's work, and can I just be, I don't want to be flippant, but be honest. The whole like, oh, I'm just at home worshiping in my own way right now. You're right if you're doing that. You are worshiping in your own way, not God's. With all due respect, I'm not talking about being handicapped or COVID or anything. I'm not, that's, what I'm saying is if you are making conscious decisions to separate yourself from fellowship and trying to tag some godly line onto it, it's a lie from hell. And that's not condemnation. That's just the fact because you're removing yourself from what you were always designed to be part of. And that's God's people as broken and jacked up as we are. It's because one day we're going to be one. The Christian that you've hated the most, that I've hated the most, Christians that we've mocked on Facebook publicly, Christians that we've railed on, guess what? You will have some sort of unified consciousness with them in Christ for eternity. That's the truth of what God has for us. So we have, Paul says, I have a course. I'm going somewhere. And he confessed to it. It's going to be hard. The course is hard. I was talking to, uh, and I don't mean it's disrespectful, but I was talking to a really old lady one time. She was a believer. She loves the Lord, loved the Lord. And we were just talking. And uh, she went to our church. I was talking to her. And I just remember, because she was like, again, respect, ancient, straight ancient. Of course, I was like 17 at the time. So, you know, I mean, my dad was ancient, and he was my age. So clearly, I, he was very young. But this lady was, you know, seasoned. And I remember she just told me, she said, you know what, James? The sooner you realize that life is hard, the sooner you're going to move on with life. And I was like, I don't like that. I want life to be easy, but it's not easy. It's not easy because this world doesn't know you. This world doesn't know Christ. This world doesn't have the same values that we do, although it beckons for our values on the daily, doesn't it? It woos us, it draws us. Romans 12 says that it tries to conform us, literally slam you into a mold. That's what it means to, to compression mold. This world is compressing mold. Have you ever seen, you can watch, I watch too much YouTube, but you can watch documentaries like on how they make some cans. It's like, the, it's like a piece of aluminum, like, I don't know, it's a little disc like this. And then and, and it, it drops into like this metal cylinder and this huge ram comes down and goes, boom, and it just, whoosh, boom, whoosh, and it just, it just compresses it into a can. That's the picture. Obviously, they didn't have cans like that. But the idea is a compression mold, that you're being compressed into an image. And the Bible is very clear that the world is hammering you, hammering you. Ha be offended. Be angry. Do whatever you want to do, because that's what true freedom is. Righteousness is restrictive. But the reality is, even though that we're being pounded by that, the end of our course is what we've always wanted. It's the friendships. It's the kindness, it's the love, it's the fellowship. So anything that detracts from that, that's not from the Lord. Again, I'm not saying if your kid's in sports, like you're somehow sinning if you don't come to Bible study. I'm just making a simple point that if you are re removing yourself from fellowship over offense or something like that, or even just discouragement, you're going the wrong direction. You're going the wrong direction because God loves you. 
and he has great things for you, and he designed you for something wonderful. We cannot sit at home because of some reason that is invalid and be upset that we don't have besties. We can't do it. It's a lie. We can't sit at home and rail on other people and then be upset that we don't feel close with people. That's not how human beings work. So Paul's had these relationships, but he had the relationship simply because he walked with Jesus. And when we find other people that simply walk with Jesus, we can experience this kind of fellowship on this side of heaven. It is amazing, but it takes godliness. And here's what I mean by that. We have to love. Mm -hmm.